Hello there, welcome back to another episode of Science is Fun. Now here we are going to demonstrate a cloud in a bottle. Now what I'm going to show you over here or demonstrate you over here is exactly the same procedure that occurs in nature. The only difference is this thing that is happening over here in this bottle is at a very very small scale. All the rest of the things remain the same. I'll explain to you, I've filled it with something. I'll tell you all the nitty gritties a little bit later. First, let us see how does this cloud in a bottle form. And then I'll also explain to you the science behind it. Here I'm using a bicycle pump to create a high pressure inside this bottle. I think we generated enough pressure. I'm releasing this. And what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to release this pressure all of a sudden and you will see the cloud getting formed in the bottle. Three, two, one, go! Can you see that? Here I'm demonstrating you once again now see what I'm going to do is this is again pressurized so what I'm going to do is I'm going to release the pressure all of a sudden and you will see the cloud occurring can you see that now this you can see the cloud disappearing from the top Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to again seal it up and again I'm going to create a pressure inside and what you will see is that this particular cloud will disappear. So let's show you that again. Now here I'm increasing the pressure again. You'll see the cloud disappearing. There, the cloud has again disappeared. What I've done is I've again increased the pressure. Now once again I'll decrease the pressure. I'll tell you the basic physics behind it. Let's check it out once again. What's happening? There you can see the woof of cloud. Alright, now I'll tell you the little bit of science behind it. Now, what I have taken in over here is, I don't know if you can see it, a little bit of rubbing alcohol, maybe 5 to 5 ml or even less than that rubbing alcohol. Now, what I have done is, this rubbing alcohol will easily vaporize, will easily vaporize and form these vapors of alcohol. So basically you can also use water, but for water, I mean that's the process that occurs in nature. For water, you need a lot of temperature and pressure difference, which is not possible in this small plastic bottle that I showed over here. Now, so that is one thing. So I needed some vapor molecules, so I used rubbing alcohol, 70%, 60%, 80%, I don't know how much this was, but it was rubbing alcohol. Okay, so that is one thing. Now, the second thing is, see, uh, when I apply pressure, when I am applying pressure with the help of the bicycle pump, this bottle actually becomes hot, okay, because I'm increasing the pressure. Now, what is happening? When I'm increasing the pressure, the molecules are able to gain more kinetic energy and they rub against each other more, creating an increase in temperature and when there's an increase in temperature of course condensation doesn't take place so what you see is this clear bottle when I increase the pressure 
Now exactly the opposite happens when I decrease the pressure all of a sudden. Now when I decrease the pressure all of a sudden, I don't know if you've ever seen uh, when you uh, remove air from the bicycle tires or bike tires, what happens is the area, I mean I touched it when I uh, removed this knob over here and it started feeling so cool. I mean much cooler, much much cooler, really cool. Not as cool as ice but probably reach to 10 degrees or so. So what happens is when I release the pressure, the opposite happens. Now there's less pressure. Earlier with the help of the bicycle pump, I increased the pressure. Here I decreased the pressure, so condensation, condensation took place and you could see that cloud in the bottle. Now how to relate this with nature? Now let's say you have water on the ground level over here okay it vaporizes now you have this whole column of atmosphere pressurizing it so it does not form a cloud now slowly these vapor molecules water vapor molecules they go up in the atmosphere now as they go up the amount of air atmosphere above it keeps on decreasing so what when that way those vapor molecules when they reach here the pressure decreases so when the pressure decreases it condenses and it forms a cloud on the other hand the same vapor molecules when they were near the surface of the earth or they were near the ground the pressure was much more because of the whole column of atmosphere exerting pressure on those vapor molecules but when the same vapor molecules moved up, the pressure on them decreases and the temperature of course decreases. When the pressure decreases, what happens? You forms a cloud. So it has something to do with the adiabatic expansion and adiabatic contraction uh, if you would have studied in physics. So this is basically the science behind this cloud in a bottle. The phenomena is exactly the same. I'm increasing and decreasing the pressure. And when I'm increasing the pressure, the uh, molecules gain kinetic energy so they rub against each other more and when they rub more generate heat and that is how the temperature increases and the opposite happens when I decrease the pressure so the temperature decreases I mean it also you can also relate it to the gas laws that you have studied Charles law and you know all those laws gay Lussac law all right another thing to make this thing happen uh, the the, the uh, trick of the trade lies Oh, there's still some pressure inside. The trick of the tray lies here. It was, I mean, I have been trying to make this thing, for, I don't know if you can see it from near, for quite some while, but uh, every time there was a leakage, because I'm generating 25 PSI pressure inside this bottle, and that is too high a pressure, almost uh, a little less than the pressure that you have in your bike tires. 25. By bike tires, you probably have 28 to 30 psi pounds per square inch. That is how it is measured for these uh, bikes. So, over a week, I've been trying. I mean, this is a simple, uh, what can you say, the bicycle knob that you have. But uh, getting to have a system which would be seal proof, which would be uh, leakage proof was a lot difficult it took me almost a week to come up with this improvised device that you see over here and this is the heart of the whole experiment I don't know if you can see it but a lot of science has gone into it very intricate otherwise it's just a normal uh, soda bottle that you have three liter soda bottle there's nothing else but the real stuff, the crux of the matter is this particular thing, which was very difficult for me to improvise and make it because every time I tried it, there was a leakage and one time everything boom, blew off. So, I mean, that's a part and parcel of the experiment, but what I wanted to get across is this particular...